introduce yourself? No, I haven't yet. No. That is Paul I've been Blackman. very silent. <laughs> Paul Blackman is the author of this, The Cities, the largest and most recent collection of his work, a translation, a poem of the Cid. This old book, newly reprinted, I see. Is that right? Mm, it is old in fabric. Once brought out by Mr. Creeley in the Divers Press years ago. The Nets, which I published years ago. And one other, who's now an African. What's that? Oh, other yes, yeah, one other, other, right, yes. The Reardon poems, which I've never seen before. And this beautiful collection from England, in, on, or about the premises. From this Jonathan Cape, who's lately been... Hmm? Same song, right, the Eshelman book. Yeah. Right, I didn't bring that, but I, I don't, that's song. not, uh, okay. Paul Blackman, also a translator of, and... Thank you very much. I want to start by uh, reading some recent poems which have um, fallen into a sort of strange category. A lot of them seem to come out very much like journal. So don't expect any polish or finish unless it happens to turn out. And these have mostly been done over the last year. And I think I'll try and do the whole first set uh, selection from what I might call journal. Spent the last year, had the pleasure of spending the last year in Europe doing nothing. And uh, this is the result of nothing. It was just. This first piece is called Oh Shake It Up, Baby. Today was wave day. If you had anything to wave, today there was the day to do it. A late start, however. Flags waving, a damp cluster of them at the Palais de Luxembourg, a man in a window across the street from the Hotel Jean Bart waved a lot at a group of students. Turned out to be a chorus rehearsal. Joan and I waved our eyelashes at one another and other things. I stomped mother naked up and down the room, imitating the choral director across the street. Everything we do is very funny, or very tender and serious. We wave everything, even clothes. I waved a hundred franc bill at the younger brother waiter at a Vietnamese restaurant on Vosgerade, and he had to go wave it at someone a few doors away to get change. After I waved my tail with some success at one of those Arabic bathrooms, in a bar near the metro at La Tour Maubourg, in the middle of a good German beer, I left my Mexican hat off and let my hair wave at people. It seemed the only thing to do today. And swung my hat cavalierly through the metro changes all the way to Strasbourg, Saint-Denis, where the correspondence is, will get me to Saint-Placide with just one change of trains. And just to finish off the day, a pair of gendarmes, corner of Vaugirard and Boulevard Raspail, waved down a cab with a passenger in it and waved a finger at the driver. I guess he was going too fast that block. The driver, as was natural, waved it off. This is more of a poem. On a kind of shorter, I think. Paris and not spring either. 
the young man in the next booth in the cafe is waiting for while he studies and looks at me occasionally while I translate and wait for. We exchange glances, shy, and his girl arrives first. I feel her presence over my right shoulder. Before he sees her, I see her. She is blonde and very pretty. Mine is brunette and has not arrived yet. He and I both smile. This city. It's a peace poem. Which nobody wants. What you do is pick them up and pack them in. Vineyards on these quiet mountain hillsides under, under fog, the far mountains gone behind it. The whole family here, even the clock. I better start that over. <coughs> Vineyards on these quiet mountain hillsides under fog, the far mountains gone behind it. The whole family here, even the cows line up to graze in the rows, four to a side. Turn to watch the train pass. We probably, also in fog, from where they stand, bend to the grapes, the grapes. Boxes ready piled under the pear trees, the apple trees. The mist hovers above the still waters of a river, like smoke, lays a band around the side of a hill, all a peace. We must never kill anyone. Pick windfalls off the earth. Pick grapes. The expensive meal. Par la main jusque la source. By hand, he said, to the headwaters of it all, where everyone begins, be gins, whiskies, cognacs, le bien set to payer la différence, and the man who runs the cloakroom and has his tips from that polishes the glasses. When there's no one splitting out, it's a way of doubling it up. I love the seriousness of it, how they all take it, hard or well, you... Give them all le pouvoir they've done well or badly. It is not true. I blow my nose on some, ho some toilet tissue from the hotel. The young man wiping glasses notices it. His neutral face, that increases his tip. Blow everybody's mind. The only way to do it. I came back... Uh, I came back very shortly, well, shortly for a month, or almost a month, in the middle to make a sort of weird and lovely tour through five or six Negro colleges in the South for the Woodrow Wilson Foundation. And it seemed somehow that the way things were working out, I, I'd, I, I'd done an awful lot of traveling. I mean, like, and too fast. I've gone from Aspen, sort of on August 21st, and to Juarez, to Mexico City, to New York, to the boat, uh, to Le Havre, Paris. Um, then I, somewhere toward the end of September up to Amsterdam, and then, uh, then down back to Paris, and then up to Luxembourg. And I mean, like the thing was... And then I get back 72 hours after I left Paris. I'm waking up in Atlanta, Georgia, and, uh, no, I'm sorry, Birmingham, Alabama. I, uh, you, can get, you can get confused like it was raining. I remember I woke up and it was raining, and I thought, it's raining. I'm back. I'm still in Paris. <laughs> but it wasn't true. <laughs> it wasn't true. I had to get up and work. Anyway, this was, and somehow in like an... I don't know, something like in 17 weeks, I'd, I'd pack my bags 25 times. I don't, I don't know how that happened, but, you know, like that was how it sort of worked out. 
So I was getting very a little bugged at moving things at that time. And this is called Off and Running. <laughs> to sit and wipe one's ass in Paris, the Rue Jean Bart looses a goose all morning, oh, leaving again, realizing tomorrow morning this time I'll be sitting in East 7th Street probably doing the same thing, gumming the runs clean of my crack, the voyage back. Now it gets me uptight the wrong way. Unable to sweep my Lady Joan this morning, the slightest resistance brought him down. Well, stop trying so hard. What? Nothing, if not cheerful, so I take her to breakfast instead. I left my heart in San Francisco, my boots in Mexico City, my right arm in Aspen, Colorado, two shot glasses in Amsterdam, an ashtray in the Rue de l'Alpe. A tape cassette in another Paris hotel. I wonder what it was I left in New York, in Geneva. On the boat, it was my gear and monster belt with a steel buckle so enormous you could tune in UFO shortwave on it. <laughs> left in the officer's john on the sports deck. Oh, hell. I don't want to go no place. I want to stay wherever I am, <laughs> wherever you are. Baby, I have to go again. Sorry. <coughs> Facing south. Asheville, North Carolina, or in Asheville, Tennessee, but Memphis, as any Egyptian knows, where and, and as it goes, is on the river, south. Who's asking? Maybe it's north. Is where my mouth, O Cleopatra, goeth, goeth where thou cometh, in the bend of that river to the left. Signals three. Grin, lady, in your sleep. Grin, sleep is my D. Sire, what? A real baby sometimes. Let us lay thickly our soft down together. Dis, cuss the whole situation. Dis, play your cunt with my prick. See what happens to the bed? It sinks and rises. The real surprises. We can have our pound cake and eat it too. Wahoo. <laughs> Little songs, right? Birds, Amsterdam. Flurry of fat sparrows hits the fence, taut near the Oude Torfmarkt, whence look very surprised to have made it. Look around. Ten notes, two chords. I try to sight read the melody, too fast they've gone. In the tiny square northwest side of the Leitze Plain, where is a car park, the trees are full of grackles. Taxi, stand, taxi driver, no fare, stops, briefly gets out, slams his door, walks to the nearest one of the youngest trees, and kicks it. <laughs> Hard and high. The sky is blackened. The ears are sailed. The driver smiles. The big birds circle, drift, and land again. He gets back in the car and drives off, still smiling. At the Dam by the Moses Aronstrat, the Sunday afternoon is filled with solid citizens, their overcoated arms, shoulders, loaded with pigeons, doing the neck ring peck, little girls with their hands full. The pigeons cluster and waddle and fly in packs, circle up to the roofs and back, and keep the air full of wings to be fed. Prinsengrach, Herengrach, Singholgrach, families, flocks, quack. It's ducks swinging al swimming along, leaving delicate wakes along the quiet canals. Well, not so quiet. Quack. Sarvati Park, Fundal Park, a few songbirds, more grackles, more sparrows. 
Amsterdam Sabos, more of the same, plus some few swans, mean beak, very white, plus everywhere, my gulls. Above rooftops, on them, into backyards, over canals, bridges, parks, and markets, business streets, central station, the Amstel, the Singhel, Rokin, Ostop, and Slotemir, Interport, Dock, Hetish, Dijkskracht, Erzhaven. Mostly the bird sound in this town is harsh, and in, over, everywhere, my gulls hustle food. Big and tough or small and compact, they make it. Though the palace on the dam belongs to the pigeons. But I'd heard all that about storks nesting in chimneys. Did not see any, did not see any storks. Where are the storks? You see what I mean about it being mostly <coughs> journal rather than any sense of formal poem. But I had a good time. I was. <laughs> a couple more Dutch pieces. <coughs> this is called Gin. The Dutch, as you know, put out a very good gin. Uh, you can't drink it with anything except itself, which is its main virtue. <coughs> They have uh, their two main brands. One, one of course, is Bolts, and the other is Falking. You can go into a bar and say, give me some of that Falking gin, you know. Right? <laughs> Ure Genebra. Ure Genebra. It's about the only two words I learned in Dutch was Ure Genebra. <coughs> Everyone speaks English. <coughs> clear objects, the clear objections, the gulls float through the yard. The wall paper is stained. Sections are pure Cretan linear B. I fled New York somehow. It's all hers now and cold. Amsterdam is full of sun. It falls a slant ten buildings in the next street. I can see from my window the Dutch believe in large windows. It is exactly the width of the room, a long, narrow Van Gogh room, even the skinny bed in the right position. Except the canal is the front of the hotel, so the room faces what I would call the wrong direction. Black roofs and red roofs, tile, while blackbirds in the shadowed backyard hop about through yellow leaves or flap between the lower branches. An enormous gull just swooped the yards leisurely. The canal at the front of the hotel. Go to it. Read the cards. Even with sunlight, I am lightly depressed. Photo, September 18th, the boat train, Le Havre to Paris. Joan confronts the French landscape, the gold locket, her tooth marks in it, good, tight lens on that camera. Blue dress, blue landscape, blurred. Oh, shit. I left my heart in the 7th arrondissement, a good bit south of here, apparently. Forget it. I've left my heart everywhere. Walk around collecting bits and shards. Gil, how do you keep such a unified vision of your own lives and parts? I take trains or planes, boats or goats. Gull flies through the backyard one way, crosses pigeon flying through the other. Damn, this gin is good. We come back to the title lines. Huh?
This is a poem. This is a poem I've I, I, I have been thinking seriously for a long time about sending to the New Yorker. On the count of it, says absolutely nothing. <laughs> uh, but the only thing is that somehow in it, I have managed to put the word sheep dung, cow turds, and pig shit. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm still considering sending it, you know. <laughs> that should be a breakthrough after Allen Ginsberg, you know. <laughs> and Ezra Pound, yeah. So. It's called Train to Amersfoort. Sheep staring dully across a field. Three white pigs in another. In a third, seven black and white cows grazing along, their heads down, tails lifted, line of trees far off. Sheep, more sheep, more cows, more pigs, cluster of distant cows, two horses, heads lifted this time, tails lifted also. Whole herds of seagulls walk in the fields. Sheep dung, cow turds, pig shit. Small canals run through the cold November days, green foggy morning. Near an arm of the North Sea, near Nardan Busum, before the railroad turns from the sea toward Hilversum. Another train poem, Paris Toulouse train. First section is called Calci. Roads run off into the countryside and lanes into the trees and disappear, the hills. At Brive, the first thing I see is a young wife standing in her dooryard, eh? Chick in red coat, black slacks, a yellow sweater, not taking any chances. The caress. That river kept coming at us from the left side of the train at an angle. At Gourdon, shades of de Bourne, I hear the rhythms of the old speech. Two gents in the next booth in the dining car speaking a language thought to be dead the last 700 years. They talk about the lack of feeling in politics these days. Shades of Gilliam. Okay, I'm home but not safe yet. Whole stretches of rapids. Can you think of any better entry to the south? What anyway goes on in your mind? Tree that it will be, hill that it will, feel that it see, mist that it was Joan's mouth I kissed before I left Paris, fog that I dig, December, be kind to me. Power. Tile yard, lumber yard, a medieval bridge, towers at both ends and in the middle. The hill like a sleeping animal, dormant, the gas stations like any place else. Signals for. Pour l'obtenir de l'eau, appuyez sur le pédal, it says and the eau non potable has been carefully edited down to no pot. And having had my tape recorder on for four hours, the new conductor at Montauban and his small mustache tells me, la musique s'est interdit sur le train. Forbidden to play music on the train. I figure he's got nothing else to say. There are sons of bitches everywhere. <laughs> Bonjour, Monsieur Blackburn. Welcome back to Toulouse. And rain, I swear. <coughs> Musée des Augustins, Toulouse. I spent an hour I was waiting to see a professor. Carthaginian lamps shaped like shells to fit the hand, 
two flames, one lifting at each end of that beautiful curve, did they join? Lover's lance, put in some oil and see. And Etruscan cups, five, six centuries before that god came down, all jet black with big ears, held like a dipper, probably dipped in the jar, spill a bit under the floor first for the gods. The guards who'd confiscated my camera stayed down by the cast at the entrance. So I touched all the statues of Venus, cunt, belly, and breasts, all those of Bacchus and Hercules. I tickled under the balls just to be sure. And Lucius Verus, 161 to 169 A.D., looked just like Robert David Cohen. I passed a pleasant hour with the goddess, the gods. And then I guess I got to Spain and started writing some poems. I mean, like the rest of these sort of feel like poems for a while. <coughs> Valentia, winter. Sunrise now, about 8.15 every morning. Light starts coming over before that. It's such a drag to get up in the dark, and I do. No one to turn to, I may read for a bit, turn the heater on, the light off, try sleep another hour or two. The light, when it does come, is timeless. Check the sky and eat an orange, then make coffee. Fog. My hands sit there, turned on my knees, in word and soft, a few wrinkles along the back. I stretch them out. They hold a white cigarette and are brown. Gulls balance, swinging pairs up through this weather. Thunderstorm beats against the windows, eight or nine lines of surf breaking, white caps on the sea, color. <coughs> Muddy green today, as far as I can see, which isn't far. Lightning strikes again, so many ways. Parallel to the waves this time, I hardly noticed the thunder, though it was loud. The hands are brown, I tell you. Fog. The probability... On that not-so-bleak hillside, rocky, though, there's a bird out there singing a goddamn rondelay. There's a bird out there. Also broken bottles, tiles, bricks, trash, flowers, purple, yellow, and white, many iris, thorns, and rosemary. The hillside is mainly a gray-green. The, uh, the sea, a bluer green, goes crash below. Repeatedly. Crash. A goddamn rondelay. I think she must have built a nest out there. Crash. <coughs> Cutting the mustard. The world and ourselves pass away. We go on and enter the dance. What other chances are there we could think of as already prepared? <laughs> Malaga Port. It saves the city, a provincial other, wise port. How the bloody ships come in, the sheer machinery of docking. Un how we knock the other larger ports to the north, Cadiz and Huelva to the west, 
loading certain hatches. Creak of crane, the strain of ropes, the rub of hulls that close, smell of sea rotted wood. In the wine in shore, we'll co in bars, we'll come to later, not any dream of release, but real, cold, and flowing. Release we cannot beg or steal, but come to later, nub of skulls on hillsides, sweating bodies, gypsies under the bridge on beds of Kanya. Closed open mouths of bitches, dull strain of guitars below, the bold song rising, the hips rising in the swing of the bloody knockers, steers the world back home. Mulligan is still a very good port to put into. Shay's death. Plaza de Portal de Alche in Alicante, wet from last night's rain. It's eight in the morning. The square carries its unintentional message in its ancient ma name made new. Coffee and ensamadas at the kiosk set low center amid the gondolas and palmeras. Grande como el grande no ande. Only two taxis on the square now. A young man stops on one corner at a shop mirror to squeeze a pimple or two on his way to work, looks vacantly at the white blood-flecked excrescence on the thumb and middle finger of his left hand, checks the mirror again, the hope of Spain. By 8.15, there are four taxis on the side toward the port, two on the lateral and Five mini-taxis on the side toward town. The second coffee, this time black with cognac, goes down more easily. It's also a piece from Alicante, the quality. Stocking footed down the tiled and whitewashed narrow hall, it's full length. The light works, so sit and read. On the something 28th, South Yemen tossed out 30 British military hired a year ago when Yemen became independent. Foreign Office sends a stiff note. The Yemenites reply politely that they're saving money. And an outfit called Rutherford Española S.A. at 14 General Godet in Madrid will build you a swimming pool shaped like your kidney, out of stone and tile. The rectangles of paper are neatly torn. I tear mine once more, lengthwise, thinking of all the smug accountants in Yemen and how polite they are, and the 30 British advisors out of a cushy job, while I slowly and carefully wipe papers a bit on the slick side. As it ends, it is not just at night when we sleep. There comes a moment in the life that we won't know. We go past it into, or it goes past us. There is a rose and purple cloud to the north reflected in this sunset. I want you all to know I love you very much. Oh, shut up. You are a dead man, for Christ's sake. <coughs> Let me close, uh, close the first set. I'm reading a little over half an hour. So I don't know. Uh, if, we, if we have s short sets, can we keep it? Uh, maybe we can do three if everyone can stand it. This last piece is called The Net of Place.
Hawk turns into the sun, over the sea, wings red, the turn upward, mountain behind me. I have left those intricate mountains, my face now to the simple Mediterranean, flat, small boats, gulls, the blue. Old Hawk is still there, though, as there are foxes on these barren mountains. Old man in a beret, 62 perhaps, came into the village bar the other day, two skins and one fox unskinned. You hunted these down? I hunted them. They come in closer in winter, seeking food. There isn't much up there. Rocky headland down into the Gulf of Valencia. My windows face north. He was a hawk. I turned back to the Rockies, to the valley swinging east, Glenwood to Aspen, up the pass. It is darkest night, the hour before dawn. Orion, old hunter, with whom I may never make peace again, swings just over the horizon at five o'clock. As I walk, the mountains fade into light. Being together there was never enough. It was my thing. Nothing of importance, the reach, was ever said. I turn and say farewell to the valley, those hills. A physical part of well-being's been spent and left there by mountains, valley, all, never to be there again, never. It is an intricate dance to turn and say goodbye to the hills we live in the presence of. When mind dies of its time, it is not the place goes away. Now the hawk turns into the sun, circles over the sea, defines me. Still the stars show through. Orion in winter rises early, summer late, dark before. Done during August, during which day the sun shines on everything, defines it, shadows I do not see. I rise early in every season. The act defines me, even if it is not my act. Hawk circles over the sea. My act. Saying goodbye finally. Being here is not enough, though I make myself part of what is real. Recognize me, standing in that valley, taking only the embraces of friends, taking only my farewell with me. Stone from my mountains, your words are mine at the end. That's enough for a Can we break now?